Hello, everyone, and welcome to this webinar organized by Doxity in partnership with MD Home Business School that we have called Launch an International Career into Sports with the Master in Science in Sports Industry Management. Thank you very much for being here with us tonight. Just bear with us for a couple of minutes until everyone can join tonight. We are expecting so many people from so many different countries and so many different time zones. So it's fair to give everyone a couple of minutes to uh, join us. In the meantime, if you would like to say hello, you can use the chat box that you will find right here below in the Zoom menu. You can say hi and let us know where you're connecting from. We would love to hear where you're watching us from tonight. So we have a fantastic panel. From Embryon Business School, we have Charlotte Giro Kazan, who is um, in charge of marketing and development uh, at Embryon Business School for uh, this program in particular. And we also have the pleasure to host uh, here tonight the presence of Philippe Luzwarne, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, who is also the program advisor for this Master in Science in Sports Industry manage Management. So. Um, bear with us for a couple of minutes, as I said before, until everyone can join. Uh, I'm Lucia from Doc City, and I will be the moderator tonight. You can start saying hi uh, right here below in the chat, chat box, and you can let us know where you're connecting from. And then if you already have questions about uh, this program, about admissions, about the contents, about our life in France and everything you would like to know, you can place them on the Q&A box that you will also find here in the Zoom menu. And we'll be more than happy to answer them all at the end of the presentation. Also, at the end of the presentation, we will give you details about how to obtain the certificate of attendance issued by Doc City. So, um, as I said before, I'm Lucia from Doc City, and I'm glad to present this webinar organized in partnership with Embryon Business School, launch an international career in sports with a master in science, master of science in sports industry management. Tonight with us. We'll have a luxury panel uh, with Charlotte Duval Kazan, a marketing and development management manager for this Master of Science. And also we will have uh, Philippe Luzuarne, who is a program advisor for this Master of Science uh, in Sports Industry Management. So um, if everyone agrees, we can start right away with the webinar. We uh, our, our panel can start their presentation. So uh, to everyone, enjoy. Perfect. Thank you very much, Lucia, for this um, presentation. Um, it's very nice to see you all. Um, I'm very happy to see quite a few names coming from apparently quite a few different cultures and countries. Um, so again, I'm Charlotte. I will be one of the two persons talking with you today. Um, we are going to talk a little bit more about exactly the uh, Master of Science in Sports Industry Management, uh, what it entails, and uh, pretty much the type of careers it can get you uh, in the sports industry which, as we all know, is a very niche industry where it's quite hard to get your, your foot in the door. And the goal of this program is really to give you all the necessary tools and networking connections in order to achieve that. So I'm going to share my screen with you uh, so that we can start this presentation. The presentation itself will last for about 40 to 45 minutes, and then we'll take all of your questions at the end. Please do not hesitate to put all of your questions in the Q&A box, uh, box uh, while the presentation is happening, and we'll happily answer all of those by the end. So first of all, before talking about the MSc in Sports Industry Management from EMU Business School, I think it's a good idea that we talk about EMU Business School as a whole. Uh, before that, I am going to present to you a short video um, of the Union Business School to give you a little bit more of uh, an overview of our values and what we stand for. Today, taking action is about committing and understanding that the planet will be much better off when we take care of it. It is about trusting and holding out a hand to each and every one of us, because together we are stronger. Today, taking action is about giving it all you've got to make the great leap into the workforce. It is about having the courage to climb higher and see further. Today, taking action is about experimenting, innovating, daring.
It is a state of mind that we cultivate together. OM Lyon. Learning how to make a difference. Here and now. All right, up and there we go. Next slide. If I can do it. Up. Okay, so maybe, uh, is there any way to, okay. There yes, go. perfect, <laughs> sorry. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. My apologies, I'm not totally an expert with uh, PowerPoint. Uh, Canva is more of my uh, alley. So uh, now that we've, talk, we've had this uh, lovely video from um, our school, let me tell you a little bit more about the Yemenian Business School as a whole. I don't know if you've ever heard of Yemenian Business School. We are one of the top four business schools in France. Uh, we were founded quite a little while ago. We are in our 150th, uh, 51st year this year, and we are part of the 1% of business schools which are accredited by the three main international accreditation. Ces pilotes se rendent à Manille, dans le plus grand avion de ligne du monde. Means that EM Lyon Business School has the opportunity to really give you access to not only excellence. Um, based uh, studies, but also studies that are very much uh, in line with uh, the current needs of the workforce, the current needs of the markets, and here specifically, the sports industry market. EM Lyon has several campuses in France and abroad, and the MSc in sports industry management specifically happens first on our campus in Paris. So what does the EM Lyon Business School ecosystem look like? Um, we have about 9,000 uh, students every year on campus, divided um, among all the different uh, six campuses that we have. And we have about close to 40,000 alumni, which are dispatched in about 130 countries. Um, when you are studying in a business school like EM Lyon, you are coming not only for the great experience and academic knowledge uh, that you will get during your studies, but you're also coming for all the networking opportunities and all of the um, uh, uh, connections that you will be able to make after graduations for the many, many years to come uh, with such a powerful alumni community that is around so many countries all over the world. This really gives you all of those networking opportunities in the coming future. And as we've seen uh, so far, about um, a third of your future um, job changes as an alumni of Yemen Business School will be done via your network uh, in the school. So meaning that you could get an interview in a company where there is already an alumni of Yemen Business School and they give a good word um, about you to the uh, recruiter. Or maybe they, uh, this company specifically wants to uh, hire only Yemen Business School graduates um, uh, in any uh, opening positions. So there are a lot of opportunities and we find that in their lifetime, about a third of their uh, job changes come from um, the network that they have at EM Lyon for our graduates. So as you've seen for us, the mission, our first mission is employability. Uh, at EM Lyon, we think that uh, while it is great that you have a great experience with us while you're here, the main reason why you're here is to boost your employability and take your career further uh, after having had a master's, of de a master's degree with us. Um, this is reflected uh, in our, all our, our rankings, most specifically the Times Higher Education ranking dedicated to employability, where we have been ranked for the third year in a row, second best master in France and in the top 40 world worldwide uh, by over 2,500 international employers and 3,500 mergers. This means that uh, this very um, uh, excellence that we put into providing you with all the best tools in order to uh, kickstart your career and get your employability to the next level is rewarded and appreciated by many companies worldwide that really want uh, our alumni into their workforce. Um, a quick word uh, on other rankings. Uh, EM Lyon Business School, as I said earlier, is um, fourth best uh, business school in France. We have also the fourth, uh, the fourth best uh, master in management, uh, which is also in the top worldwide, uh, in the top 10 worldwide 
uh, considered by uh, the Financial Times. Uh, and we are also, and I quite like this ranking because it, this also reflects that the care that we put um, into your employability after graduation also reflects into the care that we put into your time with us uh, during the program. EM Lyon has been ranked for the third year in a row in the top three in France by the uh, Happy Index at School, which is a ranking uh, that asks questions directly of students from business schools in France and asks them about um, how well they think they are being taken care of by the administration. And for the third year running, we're in the top three in France. So we're pretty happy about that. Right. So now that I've told you a bit more about our ranking, about where we uh, stand uh, in the world in terms of um, uh, as a business school and position, let's talk a little bit more about campuses. Uh, our main campuses, our main campus is the campus in Lyon, uh, which is uh, currently in, in its last year uh, of being used. This is a, a campus that has a potential future students of EMS in sports industry management. You will not have the opportunity to know because uh, this campus, first of all, will be replaced by a very new early makers hub in 2024 in the heart of Lyon. But this program is uh, being taught on our campus in Paris, which is a campus um, that is right in the heart of the city, just five minutes away from the Gare de Lyon. Uh, and that allows you to be really in the middle of, in the thick of it, where everything is happening in the city, and also with all the like-minded people. We have about 1,000 undergraduate and graduate students, including the MSc in sports management, um, uh, sports industry management uh, in Paris, and we also have about 1,000 executive education participants on this campus. We also have a campus in Saint-Étienne, which is dedicated to our undergraduate students, and we have campuses abroad, in Shanghai, uh, where quite a few of our Masters of Science students will get to go um, do their last semester of studies. And we have a campus in India, in Bhubaneswar, uh, where we have students who are doing a double diploma, uh, uh, who will come and uh, uh, join the MSc in Sports Industry Management uh, cohort after their MBA from Xavier um, Business School in India. So while our own students will not get to go to, to Bhubaneswar. Um, the students who are doing this double degree uh, will be going to France after having been uh, in Bhubaneswar. Voila. So I wanted to go as quickly as I could uh, while telling you a little bit more about EM Lyon, because while I think our school is really great and I'm very happy to tell you more about it, I think you're here to learn a little bit more about the MSc in sports industry management specifically and uh, how it works, uh, how it can help you in your career, and if you're interested, how to apply. So. Let's talk a little bit more about the program as a whole. First of all, some key facts. Uh, a Master of Science is accessible for students uh, who have already or are soon to be having before September 2023, a three-year bachelor's degree minimum. Meaning that if you have a four-year bachelor's degree or if you already have a master's degree or even in some case a PhD already, you are eligible for this program. However, you need to have completed at least a three-year bachelor's degree before entering the program. A Master of Science at EM Lyon is 16 months in length, um, which is a slightly odd length. Most master's degrees are either one year or two years. We have decided to uh, cut in the middle and uh, have a, a happy medium. Uh, however, over, over those 16 months, you will be able to get 120 ECTS credits, or uh, to put it into better perspective, about seven, uh, 720 contact hours with your professors. That means that during those 16 months, uh, it will not be lightweight um, work, lightweight reading. The goal of this program is to really give you as much um, information as possible and as much access as possible um, in order to be um, really knowledgeable about the sports industry and all the different aspects of it throughout the program. So I want to really stress that because this is a program that will challenge you, that will ask a lot of you time-wise as well, but it is so rewarding. Uh, the program is obviously taught entirely in English, so a good understanding of French is absolutely not needed in order to study in this program. You will be um, uh, offered the opportunity to take on uh, online French language classes when you arrive in France in order to maybe get your French uh, level started when you are uh, going out and about in the streets in Paris in order to find your way, but all of your classes will be taught entirely in English. In those 16 months in the program, you will always have a four to six months professional mission. 
It is usually an internship, but not always. It could be a short-term contract, uh, a long-term contract as well, or, um, for example, an international vo um, international voluntary, uh, volunteering mission as well. So all of those, as long as they are at least four months, uh, six months or longer, uh, are considered professional missions um, that can be added in, into your program. Uh, obviously, all of those professional missions have to be linked with the sports industry in order to um, be able for you to graduate. During the 10 months that you will spend in classes, because if you spend six, six months uh, during your internship, you will be spending 10 months during your classes, you will have a one week long international seminar and you will have an international period in uh, a, a country other than France, usually lasting for about six to seven, six to eight weeks. So where are those different locations? As we've said before, the first um, uh, the program starts in Paris, uh, in our campus in France. You will be staying in Paris for the first seven months of a program. And then you will have the opportunity to go for a six to eight weeks long international period at Université Laval and HEC Montreal in Canada. Uh, during the seven months that you are in Paris, you will have a one week long international seminar in London in order to uh, meet with quite a lot of um, heavy heaters in the, um, in the sports industry and to start your networking opportunities, talk with people who have very interesting careers, uh, also sometimes some alumni from the program and to really have a lot of opportunities to visit companies related to the sports industry. So now that we've talked a little bit more about some key facts, let's have a little look about how it works exactly uh, in the program and what you will be studying. The goal of this Master of Science is not to make you only good at one thing in the sports industry. The goal of this program is to open the doors for you to the sports industry and to make you as versatile as possible so that you can pretty much job from one job to the next, also based on your previous bachelor's degree experience and have a meaningful career and a fruitful career in the sports industry, but not just uh, located into one specific field. So throughout the program, you will have many different types of classes that will allow you to um, try your hand at marketing, at management, at um, entrepreneurship, at communications, at uh, logistics, supply chain, etc. You will have quite a lot of different type of uh, types of classes that will really make you a jack of all trades. But all of those classes will be always related to the sports industry. So. How will it go? There will be four main pillars in the program. The first one is explore. The sports industry is wide. There are about a thousand sports out there. They all have their different, um, uh, their different drivers, their different markets, their different key uh, trends and dynamics. The first part will be really dedicated to giving you all the keys and all the tools you need in order to really be able to understand those different drivers, sports markets, dynamics. Obviously, you will also not just be talking about the different in a sports industry markets, but also the consumers, the fans of sports. You will be able to understand the individuals behind the consumer, how to collect and analyze relevant data, and conduct a strategic analysis and diagnosis, both internal to the organizations and external to the organizations. Pretty much in this main pillar, the explore pillar, the goal is to give you all the tools you need in order to be able to assess anything that you will have to assess uh, throughout your career. Uh, after having been able to explore, you will then have uh, the pillar create. This is where you will have uh, all the tools given to you to be able to um, uh, get uh, the ball rolling when it comes to uh, creating new ideas to solve complex problems, to really um, apply creativity and design to enlarge the scope of a primary analysis that you've done in the explore pillar, and obviously to communicate all of your ideas and all of your uh, disruptive um, uh, um, ways of solving complex problems to the different stakeholders in the company, in the industry where you are. Um, you will have through all of those different pillars, uh, theoretical knowledge and on hands um, uh, activities to really give you the opportunity to, to try all of that. For example, like you will have a design sprint that will allow you to really 
get the tools and concepts to build uh, for the future in the sports industry in a specific field um, and a specific topic every year. So it sounds a little bit complex and out there when I talk about it like that, but um, it's just pretty easy. The first pillar, you analyze all the data and you try to deliver recommendation pretty much in a consulting and um, a data analyst type of way, whatever that data may be. It could be um, looking at consumers' behaviors. It could be looking at um, a supply chain analysis of, um, uh, for example, in the motorsport world, how to get uh, in the most efficient way possible uh, cars going from one circuit to the next uh, throughout the world. No matter the question that is being asked of you here, it's how do you gather, gather data and how do you analyze it? And then create, how do you create a solution to your problem and how do you communicate that solution to the different stakeholders? Finally, make it happen. This pillar is really here to give you the ability to not only just make the plan, but to go for it. During this uh, pillar, you will have the opportunity to choose a field of specialization. So obviously, the sports industry is very wide. You can work in many different types of fields. And the goal is to not um, mandate you to uh, specialize too soon or too much. Uh, during this pillar, you will have the opportunity to choose specialization, media, hospitality, retail, product management, sports marketing, et cetera. All of those pillars are quite different and will allow you to really uh, start to get um, more of a specialized way of looking at things. Obviously, during this uh, pillar as well, you will have um, more managerial types of uh, classes. For example, how do you manage performance? How do you budget and how do you process decision making uh, and key metrics in your decision making? You will also have negotiating and selling technique classes, as well as how do you balance risks and reward in all of your uh, future projects? So all of those things will be happening in the program. And now that we have um, uh, taught you how to uh, gather the data, how to make a plan and how to make it happen, now we scale up, meaning that uh, we uh, allow you to get the tools in order to um, get your plans to uh, a worldwide um, audience, how to understand the different phases of diffusion in, when it comes to sports or leisure uh, in a fast -paced, uh, fast paced environment. How do you manage organizational tra transformations and resistance to change? Uh, we see that in quite a few sports where a lot of the stakeholders are quite resistant to change. How do you scale up and get everything uh, going to the international level as well? So now that we've talked about the four pillars, exactly how does it work in the 10 months that you are in class and in the six months that you are doing your internship? At EM Lyon, the MSc in Sports Industry Management starts in September every year. It is divided into three academic terms and then your internship, where you will also be doing your professional thesis. During the first uh, trimester, uh, that is going from September to December, this is when you have the explore pillar. This is when you have more of a data gathering, uh, understanding of the sports industry as a whole, the culture, the different sports, the different stakeholders. This is when you will have all of this pillar. Second trimester from uh, December to March, this is when you're really starting to get into the um, make it happen and into the uh, management part of the program. This is also when you will be able to choose your uh, um, specializations. And then during the third term, going from April to the end of June, you will start your term in uh, Paris, and then you will finish for the last six to eight weeks in Canada, where you will have the opportunity to not only just scale up, but also have classes um, coming from Canadian universities in the geopolitics of sports in action and the impact and rise of digital in sports and digital sports as a whole. So all of those uh, classes will be each time accompanied by a very direct um, hands-on element. During the first trimester, you will have an entrepreneurship project uh, linked with the sports industry calling, called the Transforming Early Maker Track, where you will have uh, to create um, um, a company idea and to pitch your company idea in front of all of your classmates and also entrepreneurial uh, hotshots of the Parisian region 
um, uh, in order to really use everything you've learned in class and to use it uh, immediately uh, during this test. During the second trimester, this is when you will have the international seminar where you will be going for one week to London to meet different stakeholders of the sports industry. And during the third trimester, throughout the whole trimester, you will have the opportunity to work on an in-company project. This in-company project is uh, linked with a real company. They can be small companies, they can be huge companies who all have a specific issue that they want uh, students from this program to, to solve. Um, for example, we've had students working with the um, FIA, the International um, uh, Automobile uh, Federation. We've had students working with uh, the uh, Olympics Committee in Paris um, in order to solve a specific issue on one specific thing. And so they've worked throughout the whole uh, trimester with this company in order to, to solve it. And they've presented their findings to their professors as well as the company in themselves. This also gives you an opportunity to start your networking with this company as well, should you wish to continue uh, and do your mandatory internship with them. This internship can be done in France or abroad. You do not have to do it in France specifically. If you want to go to another country, you definitely can. As this is a master's degree, obviously, you will have to also write your professional thesis in order to be able to graduate. Throughout the whole program, from the first day of September all the way until the end of 16 months, you are uh, being accompanied by our career services. We'll talk a little bit later, a little bit more about everything that they offer, but we consider that it is very important that you are not only dedicated to everything that you will learn during the academic elements of a program, but you are also very um, in tune with what the Career Center will teach you and um, that you participate into the full range of workshops, tools and events that we will give you access to in order to help you manage your career and to kickstart your employability in a much better standard uh, than they would otherwise. So now that I've talked about all of that, uh, let's talk a little bit more about the Career Center. So as you've seen, the program is very broad, very much linked with the sports industry, but you do not have to already know exactly what you want to do in the sports industry, just that you are passionate about this specific field, the specific industry, and you really want to get uh, going into it, but you don't necessarily know exactly in what types of positions, or maybe you know and you hesitate in between quite a few. Here, the Career Center at TNN Business School will be here to um, help you reach your goals. On the screen are some examples of previous career events that the Career Center at EM Lyon has organized specifically for students in the MSc in Sports Industry Management over the years. So, for example, we have quite a lot of career conferences that allow you to meet with people who have some um, jobs that you would expect in a normal company, but not necessarily in the, in the sports industry. For example, we've had the finance director of a Chelsea football club who's come to talk with students from the program. We've also had um, the former global marketing director of Wilson Sporting Goods who's come to talk about his career and exactly what his job entails. We've also have, we also have career workshops with dedicated uh, career coaches that will help you, for example, uh, to develop and build your career objectives, to have very clear ones. But will help you also with a CV evaluation, with tools to use for your, for your job search. We also have fairs and events that are organized specifically for students like you in this uh, program. We have the ASAP Fair in Annecy in France. We have the Sport Acha uh, Fair that is dedicated to supply chain and purchasing in the sports industry, where we've taken uh, our students as well in order to give them an opportunity to network. With uh, students have also uh, been taken to Red Bull events, to the ISP Fair, the International Multi-Segment Trade Show for Sports Business, which happens in Munich every year. And uh, some of our students have also been taken to FIS seminars. Obviously, we do not just go to, we do not just invite professionals or go to fairs and events. We also have company visits where we take our classes to visit those different companies, most famously or more specifically during the international seminar in London, where you will have a whole, a whole week dedicated to those types of company visits. For example, we've had the opportunity to take our students in this program to Lagardère Sports and Entertainment, uh, to Sport Plus Conseil, to Salomon, Babola, 
or the Olympique Lyonnais, which is the Lyon Football Club, um, where we've had the opportunity not only to just visit those places, but to have dedicated talks with uh, people who have who are either alumni from the program or who have very interesting careers, which are achievable with the MSc in Sports Industry Management. Finally, obviously, in order to help you achieve your career goals, you also have a mandatory internship in the program where we have students who've done internships in quite a wide array of different um, uh, companies in the sports industry, as you can see on the screen. Um, and we also have the uh, EM Lyon Career Center by Job Teaser, which is an online platform that gives you access, obviously, not only to job opportunities, that is a given, but also access to events and resources that will help you. And all of those six elements combined give you a very strong and um, very strong advantage in order to really uh, get your foot in the door where you want to and get into the type of positions that you want to, to help you with your career. Now that I've talked quite a lot, I'm going to let uh, Philip uh, take um, uh, the mic and to tell you a little bit more now that I've talked about uh, everything that we do to help you about some uh, success stories uh, of alumni and also about um, uh, exactly the employability statistics after graduation. Thank you, Charlotte. Hello to you all. Now that we've talked uh, in more details about the program content, I'm going to introduce you to graduate uh, profile who have a very interesting career trajectory. So, and we will then talk in more details about the employability opportunities you will have at a graduation from the our MSc Sports Industry Management. First thing first, let's talk about Arin J. Arin J is, um, is, is an Indian student and already had a prior experience in the sports industry as a journalist and freelance marketer. So he knew the behind the scene of the logistic and the commercial side. He discovered the sports industry um, from new angles through the program. And after this graduation, he started to work into communication manager at a local organization uh, committee from the FIFA. And now he, he, he has a current position as community manager for the FIFA group. Um, his motivation to draw this program was his passion for the sports and journalism, but he was looking for a new opportunity, so he chose to stay in France because of the variety of uh, country and culture uh, involved in sports. Um, looking after the ranking um, on the different business school, he explained that he chose to join EM Lyon because the program focused on the real life experience and the sports and, and the free industry, sorry, as a whole and not just a single area. And um, <clears throat> the different seminars and international semester also allow him to learn more about uh, in intercultural difference uh, in the industry worldwide. So uh, he explained uh, his pleasure to have to study in France with the international cohort, with the students coming from, uh, uh, from, from Peru, Algeria, Germany, etc. And it is also a, a strong experience to know different working culture have served him well in this career. So now let's talk about uh, Antoine. Antoine is a former student uh, athlete in um, in tennis since uh, since he was eleven. So uh, he has embarked the dream career with Nike after graduation. Um, entered. Antoine, sorry, had tried to become a pro tennis career, but when he realized it was not to be happening, um, he still wanted to work in the in the industry, in the sports industry. So, um, in a more behind the scenes position, so he decided to apply our the MSc Sports Industry Management. Um, with not having a business background before joining this program, so he has um, a little bit difficulty to learning on some subjects like uh, finance, accounting for the few months, but uh, eventually overcame those this difficulty. As Antoine says, very and I like, and I like very much this sentence. The main value of the program was that it sharpened my personality and my 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 passion. Sorry for the sports. And, and he helped me for, uh, uh, to ensure that I got a role and stood up in the industry. 
So it also talk about uh, the international dimension that the program offers uh, that Charlotte told you. So through the program, he has a chance to work on uh, a sporting brand, a French brand called Decathlon in Shanghai for a group project. And this experience was very beneficial and, and, and as he was uh, able to get um, an, a one-year internship in Nike in sports merchandising in Amsterdam. So now, after um, after that, now he 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 has a new position, and he was he worked with Nike Sport um, after that. But now he's working in Uber in France. So, the sports industry, at, uh, as the shadow told you, is a niche market where the most difficult aspect is to get a foot in the door. Once you are in. Is it is much easier and up to you to make your contact and create your own business and advance your career in a wide array of different positions available to you in this industry. So here are some examples of job uh, of job available after graduation. So uh, let's talk about the first uh, the brand management. Uh, let's talk about the distinguishing sports name and symbol giving value. Uh, to the brand, to the customer, you have also to be a sports agent. Um, but uh, this choice of this career to wide a wider range of management skills, such as the financial risk analysis, communication, and negotiation. And uh, last but not least, uh, even organizers, organizer, sorry, the sports event organizer has been. Um, a great deal of practical responsibilities and various skill sets. So think of all the sporting events all around the world are coming up and coming to you right now, uh, especially in Paris, if you talk about the, the Olympic Games uh, in, uh, in one year. So you have a lot of job placement statistics. Uh, you have a, a great chance to get a job before your graduation and uh, after your graduation. Sometimes uh, I was still work in France, but also you can work all around the world because the sports is all around the world. And uh, we, we've talked about the average salary is 39 um, per year, but it can change because it's, it's some, some example of uh, many jobs that you can do. And you can uh, work with uh, all uh, no brands as Adidas, Amazon, uh, AFA, or Ava Sports is a French, so Patagonia, or PSG is a really typical French uh, Olympic sport. Thank you very much to you all. Perfect. Thank you very much, Philip, for this presentation of employability at EM Lyon. So we've talked about two success stories of students who've graduated, one about uh, six years ago now and another about uh, two years ago. Uh, we hope you'd, you'll have uh, just as successful careers as them. Otherwise, here you can see on the screen pretty much, as Philip said, uh, more um, a wide array of different types of positions that you can uh, get access to and in terms of employability. What I really want to stress is uh, one um, stat is the time taken to accept a job offer within six months after graduation. 98% of all students had found and accepted because it's not just about finding one, but accepting the right one um, uh, within six months after graduation, which is uh, very comforting to us to know that uh, our students are very much desired by the sports industry at large. So now that we've talked about the program, now that we've talked about what happens afterwards, let's talk about what happens before joining the program, the application process. I will try to go as quickly as I can uh, when it comes to the application process to give us at least at least 10 minutes uh, to take questions at the end. So first of all, the application process is entirely done online. There will be three uh, steps um, to the online to the online application. First, we will need to make sure that you are indeed eligible. This is when you get in touch with Philip specifically because he is uh, the person who is in charge of his program as a program advisor. Then you will be able to do your online application uh, through our own application portal. And then you will have to take your digital tests, which are tests that you will have to take in order to join this program at TM Lyon. We will not be asking you for um, standardized testing, like for example, the GMAT or an English test level. Uh, 
So uh, let's talk about the application file, which we'll have to do online. First of all, you will need to create an account on the on our website, masters.em-lyon.com. You choose a program, here VMS in Sports Industry Management, and you apply for it. In the application file, we will ask for very standardized type of documents, um, your ID, your photo, um, your CV updated in English, all of your transcripts of higher education, any diploma that you may already have, and those are the mandatory documents. Uh, we will also, um, if you really need, if you really want to um, um, uh, put your application into a specific light, you can add some not mandatory, docu mandatory documents, like for example, recommendation letters, those can be academic or professional. You can also add an English level score or a GMAT score. However, those are not mandatory. And even if you add good, if you add uh, those tests with good scores, we will still ask you to take the EM your set test at the end. So it's up to you if you want to add those or not. Um, then when you will have to take the EM your digital tests, it will last for one hour and a half. You have to take it alone in a room. You will have to be well dressed in front of a computer because you will be filmed. You will have to have a good internet signal and the whole test will be in English only because the program will be taught in English only as well. So what will we be looking at during the digital test? The premise of the test is pretty much to um, have a selection process for this program, which is in line with today's digital landscape and the practices of major international companies in their search for new talents. So that means that uh, this type of test uh, this will not be the last time that you will take it at EM Lyon. When you will apply specifically to very international and big groups, you will probably be put in front of this type of test again in your career. We will be looking at five main pointers. First of all, your professional soft skills. Then we will be looking at your analytics and uh, analytical abilities, your motivation to join EM Lyon Business School, your English proficiency, and finally, your fit with VMSC in Sports Industry Management. So, Exactly how do we, do we go about that? The first part will be dedicated to a professional immersion module. You'll be given information about a specific company and your role in it. You will be contacted by those uh, fake co-workers that will ask you questions. You will have multiple choice answers to choose from. Here, you will need to choose the best answer according to you, and you will need to discard the least relevant answer according to you. There are no right or wrong answers here in this test. Think of it more as a um, behavioral test. Here, we really uh, want to know more about your soft skills and who you are as a person. Then, second part of the test, you will be uh, put into interactive meetings. These meetings will be with the same co-workers from the same company that you were uh, given um, information about before. I'm sorry, my cat has decided to join us. He's very interested about the MSc in Sports Industry Management. Um, here during those interactive meetings, you will be put into slightly uncomfortable situations, which may very well happen in your real life. For example, the situation on the screen, you're a project manager for a specific and very urgent project in your company. Um, in order for your project to advance, you're, uh, you will have to have Romain and Prune, the two people on the screen, work together. However, as you can see from their body language, they are not at all ready to work with one another and will not hear about it. How do you go about solving the situation? You need them to work together. What do you do? Uh, again, there is no right or wrong answer. Here, we just want to know about how you would go about solving the situation. There will be questions appearing on the screen. You will have answers to choose from. You will need to choose the answer that is the closest to what you would say in this situation in real life. There will be two to three different types of interactive meetings. Each time the scenario will change based on the answer you choose. So even if several of your friends take this test, you won't have the same scenario happening each time. All right, now we've talked about the more professional and soft skills oriented part of the test. Now let's talk about the analytical and logic part of the test. You will be uh, put in front of cognitive tests where we will look at your ease and quickness of analysis. First of all, you will have a suite of dominoes on the screen. There will be a missing domino, logically, based on the patterns that you can see on the screen, which should be the numbers on the two missing dominoes. You will have a few, um, about a dozen of those questions, and you may also encounter this ball sorting exercise. 
You will be given a photo of uh, colored and numbered balls in a specific order in those uh, tubes here. And then they will have changed um, positions in the um, tubes below. You will need to count the number of uh, moves needed in order for the balls to go from the position on the top to a position on the bottom. Here, obviously, during the cognitive test, there will be right or wrong answers uh, compared to the soft skills part of the test. And then finally, you will have uh, the part of the test that is more dedicated to your motivation to join the Emino Business School and the program, and also your knowledge of the industry and your um, project for your career. You will have questions in video format, three to five questions, where you will have to answer uh, to your camera, and two to four questions in written format, where you will have a set amount of time to write your answer on your computer. Each time, you will not be able to know the answer of the question beforehand. You will have 15 seconds in order to read the question that appears on the screen. And in video format, you will have one minute and 30 seconds to answer the question. In written format, you'll have five minutes. Those questions will be entirely in English and will also allow us to um, have more of an insight of your English level while you're taking the test, which is why an English test is not mandatory. So through all of that, the soft skills part of the test, the cognitive test, and the motivation and knowledge industry test, you will have completed your digital test. They will, la they will take about one hour and a half overall. Quite tiring, but quite short as well. Then your application will be looked at by the jury who will decide based on your application file and the results of a digital test, whether you are admitted or not. Should you be admitted to the program, there are financial aid available for students who apply to the MSc in Sports Industry Management. The first thing you need to, do, to know is that all three types of scholarships which are available are cumulative. However, they are cumulative up to 30% of the total tuition fees amount. The total tuition fees amount of the MSc in Sports Industry Management is set um, at 24,900 euros for the whole duration of the program. So those financial aid can only cover up to 30% of that. The first type of financial aid is the early bird scholarship. As you can see on the screen, this one is already gone. You need to apply early on in the application year. Applications open on the 1st of October every year for classes which start in September 11 months later. So in order to apply for an early bird scholarship for uh, September 2023, it is already too late. If you want to apply for September 2024, you will need to apply as early as possible, if pre preferably in October 2023. On top of the early bird scholarship, you also have the individual scholarship, which is a document which you will need to submit with your application. Um, this is pretty much um, a motivation letter on why you would, you would be a good recipient of the individual scholarship. Those scholarships are awarded based on your financial needs, your academic excellence, but also the diversity that you are bringing to the class in terms of background, in terms of nationality, in terms of uh, academic project, etc. And finally, the Excellence Scholarship, uh, EMU Business School, where we do not require as mandatory the GMAT in order to apply, we want to reward outstanding applicants who have taken the time to take the GMAT and who have had great scores. If you have a score of about, six, six on, of about uh, 650 um, at the GMAT, you will get an automatic 5% scholarship. And you have, if you have um, a score of above 700, you will get a 10% scholarship. Again, all of those are cumulative, but they cannot go above 30%. On average, in the MSc in Sports Industry Management, the average um, financial aid we have is at 19% of overall tuition fees. And voila, it is 6.48 in France right now, which means that I've gone three minutes over. Uh, so thank you very much for uh, having listened to me and to Philip talk for so long. Thank you very I much. I see that we have some Q and A's in the, in the Q and A box, and um, uh, yes, we, we are do. going to start. And um, Philip, thank you very much for this uh, interesting presentation, and thank you very much for uh, keeping an eye on the on the time. So we do already have some questions. Um, our participants, if you still have something that you would like to ask to our panel, you are still on time. So I think some of the questions uh, you have already answered them at the end of your presentation, but maybe we can just do a quick uh, review at the end just to remind everyone about uh, this information. We have here the first question says, hi, is it true that it's so difficult to find accommodation in Paris? Because it means in France. So, so, 
That is a good question. Technically, yes, Paris, just like any densely populated city, is not always easy to find accommodation. However, at TM Lyon Business School, we have a dedicated international student office who is here to help you with all of your needs in order to come to France. That means visa, that means insurance, um, uh, health insurance as well. That also means obviously helping you finding uh, accommodation. We have a partnership with uh, specifically a platform called Living in France, um, which is here to really help you through the whole process of finding your warranters uh, for, your, for your flat uh, renting and also obviously how to find one. So it's not easy but we do what we can to make the process easier for you. Okay, thank you, Charlotte. But um, is it uh, health insurance included with the with the program? So uh, obviously, in France, health insurance is much cheaper than in other countries. It is in, uh, included, obviously, uh, in your uh, package, in your visa, um, uh, with all of that. However, some students may want to also get some private health insurance on the side, specifically when they will be going, for example, to London for one week, when they'll be going to Canada for six to eight weeks. All of, thing, all of those are things that uh, Living in France can help facilitate for you. And obviously, at much more competitive prices that you can find uh, otherwise to make sure that the students do not get ripped off. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that, that's that's very important. Uh, many times if you come from abroad, you prefer to get on convert in a foreign country. So this is uh, always having an office that can uh, assist you and let you know which is the best option for you. It's always uh, a great thing to, to have. So another question I would like to go to is how is this program different from others in the same field? So um, the main difference with this program is that, as you can see, it's the MSc in sports industry management. And the fact that it's sports industry is very important to us. That means that you can uh, hop pretty much from one specialization and from one type of positions to the next quite easily with this program. You will be uh, able to work in the sports industry, but not specialize yourself too much and lock yourself into a type of position where after five, 10 years, you get bored of it. As we've seen from um, the two success stories that we've uh, shown you, uh, Antoine has gone from working in uh, merchandising, marketing, uh, sales, and he is now a business partner at Uber in France, so a pretty um, business director, actually, so a pretty uh, high-ranking position. And um, our Indian student had some journalistic background, but in the sports industry, so he already had this knowledge uh, and his foot in the door, but he couldn't go up and he couldn't go to where he wanted. And with a program, he really was able to um, move up in communications, in marketing. He's not, he now works uh, as a social media manager for FIFA, which is pretty cool. Um, and uh, that really gives you access to all of those types of position. But that doesn't mean that either of them are um, stuck forever in business positions or social media account positions. However, they, are, they have their foot in the door in the sports industry. Okay, this is very, very interesting, very good information. Thank you very much. So, um, okay, uh, what study or work background do I need to have to be admitted of this, of, uh, in this program? Sure. So the good news with this program is that you do not need to have a specific study or work background. Mm -hmm. um, we have students in this program who have a background in law in uh, pharmaceutical studies, in uh, engineering, obviously quite a few in business studies as well, but we will not discriminate based on your background if you are able to articulate your uh, reasons in order to come and study in this program. If you're passionate about the sports industry, if maybe you realize that you really wanted to work in the sports industry later on in your studies and you are already stuck in, uh, for example, for example, an engineering or a science degree, um, we won't hold that against you. We all know that uh, this is a new way of going about studies and going about your career. You will have several changes of career throughout your life. And uh, we accept that from the get-go during your studies. Uh, so everything that you will need to know when it comes to a sports industry, we will teach you. So we do not have any specific background needs. Thank you, Charlotte. Also, uh, apart from the motivation that the candidate expresses, you do a very thorough admission test. Uh, so yes. you can evaluate if it is a right fit or not. 
So, um, okay, this one, I think you answered it before, but how long does it usually take to find a job in the industry after graduation? A little bit of what you said before, it's not the same to get a job offer, but also to accept that that is in line with what you have studied and what you're expecting to have right after graduation, right? Yes, pretty much. So what we've seen so far, and this is uh, the statistics that I've showed you just before, were from the class who graduated uh, this year, well, in 2022, to be exact. Can we please um, uh, go back to that slide so that we can... Sure. Sorry, it's a little bit further. There we are. Oh, so okay. as you can see, we have a little over, um, quite a, a little over half of students who have already found a position before graduation. We have 90% of them who have found uh, a good position three months after graduation and 98% within six months. So uh, it goes pretty quickly to find a good position after this program. Okay, thank you very much, Charlotte. Um, do you ask, uh, yes, going back to the admissions part, do you ask for an English certificate to, to be admitted on the program or it gets just evaluated during the, during the interview? Yes, so we do not ask for an English uh, certificate specifically because we used to up until six or seven years ago. And then we realized what, that quite a few students could take the test over and over again in order to get a good score. And we know we find out much more about uh, the English level abilities of a student with the video format and then the written question format that we have than with a standardized test. So we do not ask for an English certificate. Thank you. And you also mentioned at the beginning that there's a possibility to do some languages courses, right? Yes. Uh, for students who do not speak French and want to learn French, uh, they have the opportunity to take online French classes uh, during the first, uh, the first two trimesters in order to get their hand at French. Obviously, with six months of French classes, you will not be fluent. However, you will be able to have at least the A2 level, which allows you to communicate in the street if you're lost, to just have, I would say, normal, basic level conversations, should you wish. It's not mandatory. Okay. And is it also only for students who do not have any knowledge of French or maybe someone that has a, you know, a little bit of knowledge or a, or a beginner level can also take advantage of this possibility? So good question. As of yet, we only have beginners level classes. We do not have intermediate or advanced classes. So for students who already have a good grasp of French, they can take those classes if they wish. They are not uh, subject to ECTS credits or grades. So they don't, if they can drop it if they want. But uh, we don't yet have um, uh, classes for students who already have a good grasp of French. Okay. Okay. That's interesting. Thank you. Uh, another thing, well, the last questions that we have, uh, we still have a few minutes if someone else wants to uh, leave their question on the Q&A box. So we have questions about the final deadline to apply and then scholarships or financial aid to uh, international students. If you agree, Shalva, maybe we can talk about the deadlines, which is something that you mentioned at the end, and then go to the cost for the application, the scholarships and financial aid. Sure. So um, applications open every year in the first days of October for uh, the class of September the next year. So for the class of September 2023, uh, applications have opened in October 2022 and will remain open as long as we have seats available in the class. Usually for this program, um, normally applications could be open until uh, August. Usually for these programs, they close a little bit earlier, July, um, most of the time. So that means that right now, it's the 3rd of May, there are still quite a few seats available in the program, but not that many technically, and not for that long. So uh, the current application session will close on June 2, so in about one month. Um, there will be another one after that. Uh, but I'm not sure that there will be a third one after that. So I would recommend if you want to apply for September, that you apply before June the 2nd in order to maximize your chances. Um, and also, if you are an international student, in order to have time to find accommodation and to, find, and to get your visa in time to be in class on September 4 uh, in France. After... Uh, mid-July, we will start to refuse application from international students who need a visa to come to France because you may not get it in time uh, before the start of classes. And if you want to apply for September 2024, you can start applying uh, by October 2023. 
Okay, yes, always the time and is key uh, when talking about the international students since there are a lot of bureaucracy to go through uh, from your title, the documents from your university, the visa, accommodation, et cetera, et cetera. Um, okay, then we have another question here. Do I have to be currently enrolled in a university in my country? I'll probably graduate in 2023, but would like to apply to next year. That is a good question. We do not require students to be currently uh, studying at a university in order to apply for this program. We are actually every year we have quite a few students who are uh, getting close to 30 or over 30 years old who have worked for a few years and then realized that they really want to get into the sports industry and come back to school. So you do not have to be currently enrolled in a university in order to apply. So if you want to um, apply for 2024 and take one year off in the middle to work, that is definitely a good thing. Okay, thank you, Charlotte. So um, maybe we can jump to the last question about uh, and talk about the prices and the scholarship and financial aid. Sure. So I'm sure uh, if you had a slide on the topic on your yes, I do. So in terms of um, uh, scholarship and financial aid, the first thing you need to know is that there is no difference for us between French and international students, or French and European and international students. The um, uh, tuition fees, which are set at 24,900 euros for the whole duration of a program, the whole 16 months, are the same for all students of all nationalities. Um, all financial aid, which are available on the screen, um, can be cumulative, but not for more than up to 30% of the total tuition fees of a program. Um, however, um, as I think I said earlier, I don't know if I did, um, uh, for the current class of the program, which started in September, uh, we have um, pretty much two thirds of the class has at least one type of scholarship. And the average scholarship that they have is 19%. So uh, it's not rare for us to give scholarships and uh, you should definitely apply to the ones that think that you think uh, fits the best for you because you could, if you are admitted and have a good profile, um, uh, have a good chance of getting it. Okay. Right. Okay, thank you very much, Charlotte. And uh, if our participants would like to have further information about uh, application, et cetera, okay, they can write to Philip. Yes. So as you see on the screen, you have the email address of Philip, who is um, pretty much he is the person who knows everything about the program. So he will be very happy to help you uh, with happy. any questions that you still have your application if you wish to apply. And if you want, if you want to get a more one, a more detailed one on one meeting with him, if you scan the QR code on the um, screen, this is the link to his um, uh, schedule uh, where you can book a meeting uh, either via phone or via Zoom, whichever you prefer with him to talk about your personal situation. Perfect. I also put the um, Philip's email address on the chat for if it's easier for our participants to copy it. Thank you and very much. Save it. Thanks to you. So, Charlotte and Philip, if you would like to leave a final message to our participants tonight, we encourage them to apply for this uh, message. Yeah, I think what I would like to say is that uh, if you really are passionate about sports and you want to get into this industry, I don't know if you've tried already maybe sending a few CVs to some um, companies. I think if you're here today, it's probably because it wasn't that successful. It's not against you. It doesn't mean that you're not a good profile. It's just that um, this is a, a world where everybody knows one another and it's very hard to get your foot in the door. So you need some help. Uh, and um, whether it is EMU Business School or another business school, uh, it is probably a good thing if you really want to get going and really want to get into it that you get this help. Um, at EM Lyon, uh, our program is really dedicated to get you your foot through the door, but to not stuck you into one specific uh, corner where you will have to do this type of positions for the rest of your life. Uh, and uh, what I want to also remind you all is if you want to apply for September 2023, the current application date is on um, is June the second. So if you want to finalize your application and do your digital desk by, tests by then, you have over a month. Uh, very comfortable. Don't hesitate to get in touch with Philip. Um, get to know more about the application process and uh, get the ball rolling because uh, the sports industry is waiting for you. Oh yeah, Philip. Any any final message to the participants? Any final word? Uh, I had a I had a chance to talk with uh, older um, 
all the students and uh, they was they they always happy to talk about uh, their experience they uh, sharing they fall they uh, so they 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 success story but just i have two words think about immersive program and now it's up to you to apply to this program so send me if you have any questions some um, email i i would be very pleased to uh to be here for I help you if you are french or, or if you would or if you come into all around the world please come come to my mailbox and that will be a pleasure that that i'm gonna help you so thank you very much for your time Okay, thank you very much to you both uh, for this wonderful presentation and to our participants for staying with us uh, until the end. If you would like to request a certificate of attendance issued by Doxity, you can send your request to uh, webinar at doxity.com, specifying which webinar you're referring to, and also uh, put in your first and last name and the email that you use to uh, register for this presentation. So uh, Charlotte and Philippe, thank you very much uh, again for this presentation. Uh, thank you everyone for participating. I will be waiting for you in the next events organized by Doxity in partnership with Embryo Business School. Have a nice evening. Thank, thank you. you all. Have a nice evening. Have a nice evening. Bye-bye.